Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from three countries, two continents, and featuring five guys separated only by the same language. Here's your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good night, good times, whatever time it is, wherever you're listening, joined with me, as always, shaking his head this time, is Mr. Chris Cute. Oh boy, how are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alan Robinson. How you doing, fellas? And Mr. Joe Whitaker. Um, yeah, uh, about Joe, he's uh, uh, a little bit under the, uh, under the weather. His, uh, his parents actually contacted me and sent me this. He's been, <laughs> in the bar- he's been in the bathroom all day. He's a little bit poorly, so we yeah. do wish you well, Joe. And for yeah, those, he, he, he's been in the bathroom. And for those people, <laughs> iTunes and SoundCloud, you know, Jamie just showed a picture of the Joe curled up on a toilet throwing up. Anyway, okay. <laughs> and of course, don't bother to ask him to be in one of your videos because he'll just tell you. Off. It's Jamie Page. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> This podcast just took a turn. <laughs> Boom. Blue <laughs> rating. Yes. So, there you go, Joe. You've got a little bit of a now. We've right. So, it's going to be us, one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> try and get us back on track. Uh, let's. No, it's not going to happen, is it? This week's shout outs and thank yous, as always. Um, Mr. Andy Berkey, Max Atley, Crosscut Creations, The Red Smith. Neyland's Wooden Treasures and Wacky Woodworks. So, um, yeah, big thank you to everyone that gets in touch and comments and tweets and Facebooks and all the rest of it. Don't forget you can rate us over on iTunes and all the other places that we kind of hang out and just generally be silly, etc., etc. Talking of being silly, Chris, do we have any random listener questions over from last week? Well, I know we have a lot of questions that we're going to address today. Matter of fact, our main topic is is a question. But uh, I have a question that I want to ask, and it's just you know, can I use this time as a, as a personal like you know, you guys help me out type of thing? Uh, yeah, why because not? I, uh, uh, last week's show was kind of rather serious, uh, and, and I'm going to take the blame for that. Uh, and I actually, I, I actually wrote down my question too, so you guys can uh, see that I I did that. Um, now, considering today's pre-show chat that we've had, um, we've discussed now, just for the, just for the benefit of those who are listening, we've discussed uh, strange things that happen in the woods, <laughs> the sexuality of a headless moose. Uh, <laughs> how do <did> I? <laughs> and I should explain that, <laughs> but because we were talking about moosehead beer, and Joe chimed in and says, "What do you do with the rest of the carcass?" Uh, <laughs> We've talked about how to cure vomiting because we were trying to cure Joe so that he could get on the show today. Um, we've discussed why Alan's scroll saw is in pieces, and we've also talked about kissing a girl with braces. Uh, so here's my question for today. <laughs> this week's show isn't going to be really that serious, is it, guys? I hope not. Uh, I think we've already <laughs> ascertained that. <laughs> Assuming anyone's actually still listening and they're not just gone. What? I never did. I, but I, I never did get an answer to the kissing the girl with braces, but uh, you know that's all right. I'll let that slide. Anyway, uh, so no, no random listener questions, but that was my random random question for this week, and I um, and I apologize to everybody who's listening, uh, like right now, because what you're about to hear is just going to be uh, ugly. Go ahead, Richard. <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah, I mean this this week we're going to be talking about shop organization, I believe, because there's been a, quite a lot of chatter about people moving workshops going to new workshops starting afresh doing extensions and, and all the rest of it so um we we did have a few people chip in over on facebook about shop organization i know um alan's probably freaking out at the moment he looks like a rabbit caught in headlights as it is um because <laughs> wow. we all know alan's organization well, that's a self-confessed thing alan well, um, no, let, let's give credit let's give credit where credit is due alex bull halfpenny uh, asked a while ago and this is where we got the idea for the topic today he said he said he was putting together a shop today and he says any kind of a layout kind of uh ideas you guys might have would be massively appreciated and so that's where the original question came from was from alex so alex thanks for asking that uh and giving us the idea to do this stupid podcast today <laughs> we appreciate it <laughs> so uh, yeah i mean it, it's something that 
affects pretty much everybody at, at some point, whether you're kind of established in a workshop, then an extension, starting afresh or, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of questions, well, four here straight over on, um, on Facebook. So Ted, oh God, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm trying to look at my notes. Yes, I do have notes. Um, Ted Argyle, I hope I haven't butchered your name or Chris hasn't spelled it wrong for me. Um, yeah, because my, <laughs> my notes were Chris's notes, actually. I better, I better say that up front. Um, Blame me. <laughs> and, and also confess that I didn't have notes, that Chris did them for me. Thanks, Chris. Um, You're welcome. How do you prioritise space? Um, I'm aware that the type of projects you have in mind for the future will dictate that, but as a general concept, do you design for a potential workflow, clear access to standalone tools, so table saw, band saw and stuff, or frequency of use for each tool? Um, he's interested in our thoughts. He's currently converting a 40-foot shipping container, which actually that's quite an interesting topic in its own right. 40-foot um, shipping container to a shop and building a cabin from reclaimed materials. Um, so, yeah, what do, we, what do we think about that? How do we – I mean, how do you guys organise? Do you go space or – workflow or what do you well, well you know me richard i have a huge workshop so i really don't have the problem um, presumably your your workflow orientated then chris yeah it's my, yeah my 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 biggest problem is where to park the a to v to get from tool to tool um <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> where does the court lift go of, of, of course you of course you worry about uh shop space and uh, and you know what it doesn't matter how much shop space you have it, it, I'm not an organizational freak. Here's 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 my methodology. If just a I if, a freak. <laughs> if I know where it is, it's organized. Yeah. So uh, so it's like you know I don't care what my shop looks like. If all of a sudden I go, oh my gosh, I need that tool, and I know exactly where it is and go get it, then my shop is organized. Um, now. A lot of people need to have this kind of OCD thing happening where everything's hanging on the wall and has its own little pretty place. And yeah, I, yeah, I don't work that way. Um, so organization for me is, is, is down to that. It's, if I know where it is, then it's organized. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Didn't you, um, I think this is going back a little while, you actually cleaned up your shop or you did something to your shop and you actually lost something I, well no no i didn't know no not just something i lost a lot of things because <laughs> i decided to one day because uh, my shop was another mess so i i like jamie's right because i actually gutted my shop and threw out a bunch of trash and then said okay where's the proper place to put all this stuff and i put it in its proper place and i woke up the next morning went out into my shop and went where the hell is that? I, what, what did I do with it? I didn't remember because it wasn't where it once was because I, I used to know where it was. And so, yeah, it's just a matter of retraining yourself to get used to your new layout. Um, and that just may be because I'm, you know, brain cell needy, um, which wouldn't surprise anybody, I'm sure. But, uh, but that's, sh surely that's more about, you know, where, where did you put your, I don't know, your, your set square or where did you put that? Socket yes. set or yeah. what about for the actual tools so i mean part of ted's question was you know as a you know a general concept where do you you know table saw band saw how do you fit those in okay now if i was going to do um and i'll try to uh, we're gonna try, i'm going to try to get serious for two seconds <laughs> um if Good i was to, if i was to redo my shop which by the way i plan on doing probably sometime in the fall um, because my shop and the layout that I currently have in my shop is horrendous. Um, the way I think that you work, uh, you know, I, I think it helps if you've actually been in a shop for a while and you kind of understand your own workflow. If you don't understand your own workflow first, it gets really hard to organize a shop the way that you know will be the most efficient for you. And so, I mean, I have noticed th th that primarily when um, I go to like a uh, big box store, B and Q, whatever you want to call it, and I bring home uh, cheap goods, whatever the case may be, it, whatever the the first tool that normally touches any kind of wood I bring into my shop is my table saw, and so it just makes sense uh, being in a two car garage that the first tool when I open up my garage door to unload my goods, whatever I bought, should be my table saw looking at me, and then beyond my table saw should be my outfeed work slash work table 
workbench, which which means basically it puts my table saw and my outfeed slash workbench in the very middle of my shop so that yeah. I can go from my pickup to the table saw onto the work table and then sort it from there. Um, so, I mean, ideally, when I redo my shop, if I could do it the way I want to do it, and I can't, and I'll tell you about that in a second, I would have my table saw in the very middle of my shop the outfeed slash work table just beyond that, obviously, to catch any wood coming off the table saw. And then closest to that would be the tools that I use the most frequently next to it. Uh, in my case, that happens to be a, uh, my chop saw or miter saw. Because uh, I usually, almost every project I ever do, I always use a table saw and I always use a miter saw. Now, there are other projects that sometimes neither of those tools ever touch, but they are few and far between. It just happens to be the way I work in the things that I normally do. So, ideally, table saw in the middle, a uh, work table in the middle just behind the table saw at the same level to catch as an outfield and do double duty, and then probably off to my right-hand side because I'm right-handed, I would go from my work table to another tool my, would be my miter saw. Beyond that would be whatever tool that you use next, and for me, that would be the bandsaw. The bandsaw, if I was room on that wall, I would put the bandsaw next to the miter saw and try to position it that way. So it's a matter of workflow and what you normally do. Now, a hand tool guy, uh, a primarily lathe tool scroll saw guy is going to have a totally different layout than that. But that would be the layout that would be for me. So I can't, It's you know, what? It, what's really hard about this, Richard, is that you, it's, it's tough to tell somebody, here's the proper shop layout. And yeah. if you do it differently, then you're just, you, you're an idiot. Because there's no such thing. It, it depends on how you work and what you work with as to how your shop should be laid out. It really does. It's exactly, it's exactly the same with me. Like you said, the first thing for you when you walk into your shop is table saw right in front mm -hmm. of you. Yep. For me, it's the two things I use the most, the lathe and the scroll saw. As right. soon as I walk into the shop, that's the first thing, two things that I see. I mean, serious question, Jamie. Do you, do you even own a table saw? Yes, I do. You, you have got a table saw. Is that in a position where you could, in theory, walk up to it and rip a piece of ply in half? Yes. Not necessarily a full sheet, but just a you know yes. a piece of ply. You could rip it in Yeah. Half. Okay. Yeah. But so. uh, going back to why I don't have my shop currently laid out like that, my, uh, my shop, unbeknownst, well... <laughs> Uh, contrary to what Richard would say, uh, <laughs> it is is really not that big. I have pretty much what I think would be a average American home workshop. It's it's in a two car garage, um, but my my home happens to be an older home, and it's not uh, it's not as structurally it wasn't structurally built the way a lot of homes are today. And so, unfortunately for me, in the very dead middle of my shop, if you look at a rectangle that looks more like a square than a rectangle, but it's still kind of a, a rectangle. That's basically, this, that's basically the shape of my shop, right dead in the middle of that. If you were to draw across, across it like you would do for, you know, lining up something for a lathe, right in the middle of it is a pole that is a, a, a supporting beam structure. That, I mean, I cannot remove that pole without weakening the structure above my head. And so lining up a table saw and a work uh, table right in the middle of my shop is like I can't do it because there's a pole right in the way uh, of what I would want to do. So I've really been working at how to sort that out and make things. So I'm going to have to go to the left or to the right of that pole in order to do what I was just talking about and to make it work. What and that's was your workshop before it was a workshop? A garage, a two car garage. Are you sure, Are you uh, sure. <laughs> he looks so serious I'm, I'm pretty sure Jamie yes I think that's where people <laughs> used to park cars <laughs> called a car hold <laughs> I could be wrong they may have parked boats that you know they may have had they may the have had a they may have had a stockpile of headless mooses in there <laughs> I don't know I mean <laughs> I think Jamie's like fixed that in a pole <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> is well, moose, is these American moose garages moose. are so big you can fit a car on either side of these poles. <laughs> we all have them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we're so fortunate. Uh, Simon Harmon actually made a uh, a good point. He said he thinks a coffee machine should be in the center of all workshops. A coffee machine. Yeah. You know, he's got a point. He's got. He's got a point. I actually tried that once. It lasted about three days. It's just full of dust. <laughs> He's supposed to put coffee in it. Oh, 
You're trying to drink walnut now. <laughs> <laughs> I just rub it all over myself. But by the sounds of it, I kind of have the exact same setup as you, Chris, except it kind of scares me that the first thing you see when you walk in is my Xbox video game system setup. <laughs> but, but beyond that, where the work happens, table saw is pretty much right in the middle, a little off to the right, outfeed table behind it, and that's an 8 by 4 uh, work workbench that I built for it, and I just circled all the tools and around it in a big circle. Yeah, I have a we bunch have... of weird one-off stuff mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, I think it was Jim Dockrell, or it could have been Joe Basement, who was just giving me the weirdest looks when he's here because I tend to double tape w small things to the wall here and there just because I like having them, them there. My, my my tape measure has it right in the corner of the shop, double side tape to the wall. It just that's where I like to keep it. Is that weird? No, no, that's not. I mean, hey, Alan, if it works for you, who's to criticize? It it? Right. Um, but, but I mean, I, I, let me clear something up. My shop is not set up the way I just described it. Oh, that's how you want it set up. <laughs> that's how. That's how I would eventually like to have it set up. My shop is because I have a bench that I constructed right up against a wall, and so I only have one face of my workbench that I can work at, and that is just really not helpful. Uh, because you really want to have 360 around your workbench, if at all possible. And, you know, if not all 360, then at least at least three sides of that rectangle you want to be able to walk around and work on. Because for clamping issues and all kinds of things of that nature, it's just it just makes more sense to have an open bench like that than it does to have one plunked up against a wall. Uh, because I've had to do all kinds of modifications in order to do some of the things I've done with where my bench currently is yeah, that, that's actually what prompted the big eight by four which i think is too big i would rather three by six i want to rebuild that but uh i think i did two projects that i end up having to do on the floor and on the second one i was like that's it my next project is a big workbench to put right here in the middle right i mean my my current workshop um is much much smaller much smaller than than chris's and it to me really it i was thinking about this on, on the way home tonight when we're coming to the, the podcast about you know workflow against the space and for me it's space mm -hmm. and i think ev even even fit for you chris and even for you alan and i know i know i take mercilessly take the, the mickey out of chris and the size of his <laughs> workshop i do know alan that your workshop is exactly the same size yep um <laughs> And that's the last I'll ever say of that, Chris, with your enormous space and you know, the rest of us with our workshops. Um, You're just not going to give that up, are you? I think it's a bit late for that now, I think, really, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, originally, your workshop wasn't a workshop. It was two-car garage. Same with Alan. Yes. Mine is basically a conservatory, and anyone that's watched any of my videos will know it's a conservatory, and it's, it's nothing else. Um, Jamie... I'm not really sure what. You, I mean, is it's it a garage, an outhouse? Right. Is it is it standalone or is it attached? No, it's attached. It is All attached. Right. Okay, well, wait a minute, because outhouse in America means something different in, than it means. It's got a toilet in it. Yeah. So I've got an en suite. Okay, yeah. Like. Outhouse in America has like a half moon on the door. I mean, it's like, okay, yeah. that's not what we're talking about. Okay. Right. But he keeps his straw saw on the back of the toilet. <laughs> it, it wasn't necessarily built as a workshop with a that's workshop. How, no. That's how we got good at it, Alan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the free time. <laughs> I've got a lot of half moons. <laughs> Who needs to read? <laughs> so, bear, bear with me for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, Go if ahead. Everyone, everyone just imagine a windmill. Okay. Yeah, as in, you know, a windmill, it's basically a, a largish tower that gets progressively slightly smaller at the top. Lots of levels stacked on top of each other. Right at the top, a little bit of a dome and a big saily, spinny, roundy thing. Right now. Windmills, pretty much wherever you go in the world, are that kind of shape, aren't they? They're tall and thin and skinny. But they're built like that for you know, basically one reason, is to get the sails up high so they catch the wind. And everything else within that windmill, it takes in the grain and it outputs the flour. That whole building is arranged purely for workflow. So you hoist all the grain to the top, and then throughout the process, it goes lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until out the door comes the flour, yeah? Yeah, that is a, that is a setup purely for workflow. Got it. Because no, it make it makes sense not to take the grain halfway up and then grind it a bit so it goes down and then have to take it all the way to the top and it goes because that's just a complete waste of time. If you think about a factory 
that makes cars. They are long, thin, kind of process driven. One process, yeah, the raw materials come in one end of the building, it goes through, it does this, it does that, you put the wheels on, paint it, and out comes a car. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 Henry Ford's, it's Henry Ford's mass production idea. Yeah, ex Exactly, and, and any kind of process driven factory arrangement is like that. Everything, either it goes around in a circle or it goes in some kind of linear fashion. Stuff comes in, stuff happens, finished product comes out. But I think for a workshop, probably for almost everybody, within the maker community, unless they are, you know, churning out batches, big batches of things. I don't, I don't personally feel that even if you've got a big space, you need to arrange your tools in such a way that it goes from one tool to another, to another round in a kind of, yes, that makes it easier because, you know, Henry Ford's proved that point. But think about the actual size of your, even Chris's enormous work space <laughs> how, mu how much time would you actually waste if you had to go from the garage door to the back of the garage to cut down the bit of ply no you wouldn't no 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 do, no. do you see what i mean yes you yeah i do i do see what you mean and you wouldn't so, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be wasting that much time um it, it but um i guess it comes down to convenience um it, because yeah. you know what if i was a business and i was producing a single item Every day, and my day consisted of opening up my shop, starting the day, making this item, going from start to finish, then it would be very easy for me to structure how my shop should lay out because it would just, that, then it becomes important because it, the amount of product you actually finish every day is the money that you're gonna make at the end of the day. So it becomes very important. But as a home hobbyist, somebody who just kind of does whatever appeals to him whenever or whatever he needs to do whenever, then the workflow actually does change to the project, doesn't it? That's what I was going to say, yeah. because, you know, you, you look at the car factory. Yeah. What happens if all of a sudden Ford decide to make, I don't know, kitchens? Or helicopters, yeah, exactly. Or, or, or helicopters, yeah, so that even better, because, you know, you could probably kind of see that. I mean, if you look at it from a woodworker, you might be making a wardrobe one day and then a table the next day, and you've got to throw different processes in. You might have to turn things. You might have to CNC things or have stuff brought in part made and assemble other things. So from uh, that's why I'm, I think it's more about the convenience because you're not going to change your tooling per se. You might change the way you use the bandsaw or the bits that go in the bandsaw might be bigger or you might be doing more bandsaw in or more table saw in or more lathe work or whatever. And then it becomes a convenience thing. Right. Let, so, me, let me ask Alan because, uh, oh, and Jamie as well, uh, because you know what, Richard, I, I totally get where you're at. And that's kind of what I was doing with my shop layout um, because it became, it be, because it's not that really that big of a space. It's not that big of a deal to walk from one end of my shop to the other. I mean, it takes me what, two seconds. Um, but I keep that's on, the, on the bus, right? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Four wheels. Yeah. Going <laughs> 70 miles an hour. I can be there in two seconds. <laughs> You're such an ass. Um, <laughs> uh, but seriously, guys, um, do, how much of your shop tools and your things that you actually would use do you keep on on casters or wheels? Nothing. The big one for me is planer. I have to have my planer on wheels at all times. For some reason, the current setup I have, I just can't find a comfortable place for it other than on wheels and shoved into the corner and pulled out whenever I need it. Okay. Everything well, else is stationary. Jamie, what about you? Uh, nothing for me. See, I have everything in my shop, all of my major tools uh, that I use, drill press, uh, even my lathe bench, uh, table saw, miter saw, uh, even the radial arm saw that I have in my shop. Uh, it, the, the, everything is all on wheels. And I, I do it only because, like Richard was saying, it's convenience. It's easy for me to, if, if I have a project that's too big for me to use the space that the tool is currently sitting in, I can just wheel it out and then go do it where I do have space. Um, so I think what you're talking about, Richard, and get, correct me if I'm wrong, is you sort your shop out to where the tools will all fit and become convenient to use, um, only if you can be able to pull them out and use them where they need to be used and then push them back when they're done. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, okay. another, another confession here, um, the, the workshop I'm currently in is not my 
only workshop or it's not my only workspace i do have another area where i can work which is a little bit larger I might, it's about the size of a four car garage ish um so getting up yeah it's a, if you have a look through my facebook um quite a way back probably at least five years now but somewhere in the timeline i have another work area that i can use which is about um about the size of two double garages put together it's a big barn shed type place but it's only got wait 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 so so you actually have a bigger shop than i do Ah, uh, that changes the whole thing. I don't think I'll be hearing much about how large my shop is anymore. <laughs> that took 44 episodes. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's, I have alluded to it before, but I don't, I don't film there at all. Um, I'm, I'm not there that often, but I do have it available. So that's a, But anyway, in this, when I kind of took it over, it was basically an empty space. Um, apart from a, a fixed workbench down one wall, and a big table saw bench in another it was built into a bench which is about 10 by 5 feet in size but the table saw was rubbish and it had to stay there so it was just used as a big horizontal space so i had a pillar drill on one bit and a band saw on another bit and i never actually used the table saw um and it was in a bit of a weird place as well because it kind of jutted out from the wall so it made the floor space a big area and then a tight space to get around the back of it so it was not perfect but it was what it was anyway that was immovable yeah but i had this enormous space in the middle that i could work around and what i used to do is i then put everything else on casters around the wall so if i needed to use um a jointer or a planer they would be on casters and they'd get wheeled out into the big area and then they could be used freely and once that tool had been finished with it then went underneath the bench and they awesome. were the wing they were sort of kind of the wings of um where I used to keep my miter saw. So I could actually cut nearly 16 feet of timber on either side of the blade on the right. miter so saw, I think so it's quite a big. Yeah, it's, so I think what we're talking about is we're always trying to conserve um, floor space. Yes, yeah, so that, that's the premium is the yes. floor space. And if, you know, floor if, space. You, if you're not using that tool, if you can get it out of the way, and if you think of um, oh, um, Rob, you know, Rob, Rob, Rob Appleman, Apple Rob Appleman does yeah. a fan, yeah, bingo, go ahead. It, 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 they're like drawers that pull out, but, but yeah. rather than drawers, they you know, he's got a, a thicknesser on one and a, a planer on another, and it gets used, it gets put away because floor space is the absolute premium. Because what happens if you've got, you know, a relatively big space, and I'm thinking of you, Alan, if you, um, the only reason the only reason I'm thinking of Alan is because he said he's got that big eight by four bench as an outfit table, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. With your table saw. So. I was just what, what, never mind. Good. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, fantastic because that's that makes a massive big kind of area to work and assemble and you know rip boards and all the rest of it. But what happens when you're halfway through one project assembling it on your outfit table and you've got to do something else and you need that area? Does that make sense? So you're kind of you've got loads of space, but suddenly there's an enormous volume that's taken up. That doesn't make yeah, it, sense. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be an enormous volume. I mean, I, I've got a, it's about two foot by two and a half foot outfeed table to my table saw, which is on casters, and it just has stuff put on it. So if I'm gluing something up, generally that feeds over onto the um, table saw. But whilst it's while, while the glue's drying, I basically can't do any sanding, any ripping or any table saw work, but moreover, I can't do anything else either because when I'm not using that, I have to put my bandsaw on my table saw to use the bandsaw. Or I have to get the miter saw off the floor and put it on the table saw. And you, you will have seen this in various videos. I tend to do everything on my table saw because I haven't got the space. And even if you've got a big floor space periphery around it, you, you still can't work. I got Does you. That, no, so, then, no, no. so that's why I'm, you know, even having access to a big area, the amount of times you just, if you've got a big area, you fill it. So going back to, or bringing some, brings us on to a question, a comment that Jason made. Um, even when you have space, is it still beneficial to conserve as much space as possible? Do some people actually function better in a mess or is it, just a convenience to, to laziness. Well, for me 
person adjacent, if even if you've got the space, try and conserve it because there will always, you know, if you've got step around something, you knock something, it just creates problems down the line, I think. No, I agree. I, I agree because there's, there's going to come a time uh, you, you may be involved with doing small uh, projects. Maybe you do bandsaw boxes or something that it's really doesn't, it, it's not really that big of a deal as far as space goes, but it's going to come a time where you want to build a very large bench, or maybe you want to build a Matt Carmona secretary or, you know, something of that nature. Um, you, you're going to need that space. And uh, I, 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 you know, I've seen Matt shop uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to pick on Matt Carmona cause I love the guy. Um, but I've seen Matt shop and his shop can become a friggin' mess and he will be the first to admit it. Uh, but in order to make that secretary ad, he had to be able to clear space and he did it relatively easily. Um, to some to some degree, I, Matt may be listening to this and going, ah, "Chris, I'm glad I fooled you." I don't know, uh, but but it, it appeared that way. It, it appeared like he he was able to make space to do that. And so I think that even though if you have a large amount of space, and I'm not saying that Matt Carmona does because he doesn't, he has probably the same size shop as Alan as I. Uh, but if you have a large amount of space, then it makes just makes sense to make things as condensed as possible to give you the most open space as possible because like we talked about earlier floor space is the premium in any shop that you're working at i mean i don't care what shop you're at floor space is going to be the most uh valuable asset you have you can do things on the walls but you can't work on the wall you can't work on the ceiling you got to work on something that's sitting on a floor so yeah floor space is yeah. a premium i mean another thing is if you if you have got so again picking on um alan's example with his eight, eight, eight before outfit table what happens if you want to rip an eight before sheet plywood lengthways you you still need eight feet mm -hmm. of space in feed you still need that space on the outfit so all of a sudden that area that your table saw takes up suddenly requires 16 feet Mm -hmm. plus the length of the table saw at least because you've got to fit in you know so you need 10 feet for you and the board then the blade then the out feed otherwise you can't rip so you then got to start thinking about other other things that's a good so, point richard how many feet do you figure i have on the in feet of my table saw well i mean presumably you've got enough to if you've got four feet on the out probably the same or no, you, I, I, I'm, not willing, the door. I'm not willing. I'm not willing to move my beer fridge, so I have about four feet there. <laughs> so if so I so you, if I buy a sheet of plywood, I have them cut it in half at the store and bring it home. <laughs> that well, was going to be another another comment I was going to make. Actually, you yeah, see, that's why that, that's why I was explaining how I would like to have my shop laid out if I could, because I could always open my garage door, and the eight feet that the plywood took up could always be outside but when i ripped it through it would only take up eight feet interior of my shop it just makes a lot more sense to do it that way um because it it, it, it it i mean it can because it condenses the space that i freaking need in order to do that kind of job um now i don't do it that often but i mean when i do need to do it that just makes sense yeah but then you've got to think also about the practicality of that yes you've got the i mean i i've done that loads myself if i've got a um and then mold three meters of timber, mm -hmm. a three meter length. I can do that in my small space, but I literally have to move my router table or my table saw right to the, I've got a set of double doors where the camera normally is. Um, so if I move things around so they're in line with that double door, I can get the length all the way to the other wall, feed it through, and then it's fed out of the door. But I have to think I can't do that when it's chucking it down with rain. Okay, um, I hear you. No, I, I, so understand, I understand. So it limits when you can work if, if, because you're you're limited to what Mother Nature decides that you know she wants to give you, and uh, yeah. and, uh, uh, and obviously in the UK that's more of an issue than it is for some of us here in the states. Um, but so, yeah, I, again, I, you've got areas in the states where you've got a lot of you know up towards Alan's neck of the woods in the winter. Yeah, yeah. You've you got, want the, your workshop doors open for two hours while you're doing it. it might not be raining but you've got the weather the cold to think about as well yeah. Yeah, because um, you know, 
Because if you want to spend the day working in your shop, the last thing you want to do is open up the doors and let all the heat out. If you, uh, I mean, it's yeah. like, <laughs> or no, if you're in Texas, all the heat in. Yeah, exactly. So, ex yeah, it's ex 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 so it's uh, you know, I think it boils down to once again, it's it's like you have to determine what your workflow is going to be, what you like, what you do the majority of the time, is probably the best way to set your shop up. But I think what Richard n nailed is probably the best advice there is. Just make every tool that you have on your shop convenient to use, and I think you'll be okay. Yeah, one of the biggest problems I have is laziness, and again, that kind of goes back to what Jason was saying with you know convenience to laziness. It's not convenient to have my mitosaur set up. I don't use it that often, right? But when but when I do, I, I tend to try and do everything at the same time because I've got to literally pick it up off the floor, set it up connect it all up and then do all my cuts and pound to a penny I'll mess up one of the cuts and I won't realize until later on when I'm using the area where I've got to set my saw up and right. I'll be like oh, I'll, you know, I'll cut that by hand or I'll do it another way that takes longer or or, or I won't do it until you know, it just then laziness sets in and that compounds problems later on as well sometimes all right um, uh, I, uh, Richard if I could I'll throw in a couple I'll, I'll throw in a couple of different questions that are that relate to this then we can move on if you'd like yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. Um, Chris Davison said, um, he says, having just built a little extension on my shop, I'm currently going through the process of remodeling my full layout. He said, I've spent hours on SketchUp moving all the machines and benches located around, and I found that when you move one thing, it gets in the way of something else, blah, blah, blah. What do you guys... Uh, and I, I think, Chris, that we've, we've already talked about the convenience and, and how to make things done, but I mean... When you're doing, if let's let's say you, uh, Jamie, Alan, Richard, you're getting ready to move into a brand new shop, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to lay it out. Would you guys go to SketchUp to try to figure it out how to do it, or is it? it no. uh, well, then talk to me, because I think that's the question he's asking. I've seen, I've actually seen a, a few people do it uh, this way on different videos. Uh, Alex Steele, I think, uh, you know the blacksmith. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was the latest guy to do it. I think he was he was kind of like he. He kind of had had everything laid out, and then he kind of put tape on the floor where the, of the size of his tools and things mm -hmm. like that, and marked out everywhere that where everything was going to go. And if it got in the way, then he'd remove the tape and then put it somewhere else. Okay, you know, um, and that's basically how it lined up because you could actually see where it was going to go and see how big it was going to be, and you could actually walk around the space. And things like that because you can't do that sitting at a computer you can't see how much body movement you're going to get looking at a screen right i mean, you you, I mean? You, yeah yeah i think i i do i, I was just wondering if anybody else would would approach it that way or if you know I, chris if, if 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 that's how you want to do it chris we're not saying it's wrong it's I, i'm just saying that I, that's not how i would go about doing it i, 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 I can i, I can see it from i was gonna say i, I can see that from both sides um i can, Oh, the dog's going absolutely ape. I think the door. Someone at the door. Um, That's Joe trying to get in the hangout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see the advantage with um, doing the whole SketchUp thing and laying things out and measuring and, and all the rest of it. If you're going to go that route, I would say to people: when you measure your table saw, don't me don't, don't just say, "Oh, the table saw's this by that." Add a bit on. Be really kind of. Yeah, liberal with the measurements. You know, it's about twenty inches, so that's sort of two and a half foot. Kind of give yourself loads of play, um, because you'll be tempted to try and squeeze things in and go. Oh, I've got a couple of inches play there, so that will fit there. And then actually, when it boils down to it, it probably won't. Right. The other option is, you know, cut out bits of paper and lay them out. Because I don't know SketchUp, and to be honest. I'm a bit lazy to learn something else. I get on all right kind of with pencil and paper. That's my preference. But if you, you know, if you know SketchUp, then use those skills and, and do that. But for me personally, I think that time, potentially overthinking it, is probably time wasted when you could be there going, right, I'll put that there. Right, that's there. That means I can't do this. But if I shift it along a bit, and you don't have to do it on the same day, Get everything in there, start using it, and then jiggle it around afterwards. And if you put, yeah, everyone says put everything on wheels if you can, do that, and then you can jiggle it around. Because if you need to move your table saw six inches to the right so you can get that extra long bit through the bandsaw or, or 
whatever, you can do right. that. And then it's not really inconvenient, but you've potentially wasted four hours, an hour, half an hour at the computer when you could have spent that time moving two tools into place. Does that, that's my gut feeling anyway. That's exactly no, I what I was going to say, Richard. Uh, I'd be wasting my time if I sat there and tried to sketch it up and all that. It, it's something I'd rather just jam it all in there and start working and then start organizing things around where, where they feel most comfortable yeah. as I go. Yeah. Because what's going to a penny, you do all that, you fit it all in, and then you still want to move it anyway. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, Jamie, what were you going to say? It's all right, I was just agreeing with Alan. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel lightheaded now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen often. I need to cherish this one. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, 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 Shogun Jimmy, James Jacob, uh, asked, he said, any advice for a, a new shop owner who does not yet understand their workflow or style? Um, yeah, buy a scroll saw. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, you got one going, haven't you? I got a few laying around. Did you, did you, need, did you need one? <laughs> yeah, Alan's got a nice one for eight grand. I a, yeah, I have a beautiful King Canada. I'll send it out to you. <laughs> no, but I, I think he's serious about that. I, I think he wants to know... Uh, uh, I, and I, my first, my first thing that uh, that I would say to James, as far as that goes, is if you're a new shop owner and and you don't understand your workflow or style yet, then the best thing to do is just set up, use your instincts, put things where you think they should go, get in there and start working, and then rearrange as you go because it's it's more of a feel, isn't it, guys? I mean, it's, I, I don't know. There's no proper way to tell somebody to set up their shop this way because it will work beautifully. Uh, I mean, there are organizational skills that you can use that will work for you and they will work beautifully. But as far as your layout, you know, that's totally up to what you're doing and what you're making, I think. I, I, I could be wrong. If you're, I new, think you're a new maker, you probably don't have a lot of tools. When I started this shop, I had like a small amount of stuff stuffed into the corner. <laughs> like it took a long time to build it up and make it what it was right. as a newcomer to being a maker. What? I was very much in the same position when I moved workshops. So if I, if I look at the, you know, the new shop owner, not just as in brand new starting from scratch, but actually moving from, you know, an established workshop into a new space, unless you're building that space, in which case make it as big as you possibly can with the real estate that's available and the funds that you've got to throw at it, go as big as you can. Um, if you're going into an existing structure, whatever the size of that structure, I mean, my, my lathe room is literally four feet by four feet. Yeah, I can't get a bigger lathe in there. In fact, I can't even use the full spindle length of my lathe because the wall space won't let it go any larger. You have to kind of work with what you've got. So when I moved from the, vid the you know, the, the workshop you see in all my videos in the conservatory. It was a space and just like you alan i had there was already stuff in there and i was sort of migrating through it's like what do i need in this workshop so that i can do what what am i going to be working on and so i'd move a tool over that i needed and it would either get moved back because it wasn't needed again or it would stay there mm. and then from that you then move other things out of the way and it, it just develops over time so you know go with what you've got and then you know, let it evolve at its own pace. Don't try and rush it because then you'll just have to jiggle it around again anyway. So just let it do its own thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, totally so, agree. So that, that's the four from Facebook. Didn't we have some other questions? Or oh, is there anything in the chat floating around that anyone's, is anyone actually listening to us after the first five uh, minutes? Yeah, <laughs> uh, Ster uh, Sterling Davis actually had a question. Uh, no, he no. said, if, if a man speaks in the forest and there is no woman there to hear, is he still wrong? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm, probably yes, he is. I'm offended by that. I'm going to leave. <laughs> 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 no. no. He is wrong. You guys are all right. He's definitely wrong. And I'll tell you why, because there's a female tree out there that will disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just just going back a, a slight back step to Chris's um, he's putting an extension on his and I think if I remember the pictures he posted it's kind of an L shape 
his workshop now. Okay. Um, and I think he posted on Facebook in one of the groups about fitting his band saw in. I don't think it appears in this question specifically, but from experience with a band saw, if you've got to get it by a wall, obviously put the pillar up against the wall. If you've got the ability to get it on a corner, so the the if you imagine you know an L-shaped building, that corner that's created mm -hmm. within the building, if you can get the bandsaw on one of those two walls, either with the L shape behind you or the L shape in front of you to the left, that gives you much better access. It takes up a little footprint, but you've got that full sweep around the outside. Yeah, good call. I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. That's a, it's better than having it flush against a wall. I agree with you. It's way better than having to lug it off the floor in a corner yep. up onto a table saw much better than that because that's what i have to do yeah even if you just store it there because if you, if you need to do something larger you can always pull it out definitely okay were there, were there anything else that i missed did anyone pick up any other questions that i missed from that's all i had facebook um, uh, i mean if you i can't see nothing um <laughs> jim dockerall's got beer if that's any use no no <laughs> But thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. But thanks, Jim. We appreciate that because <laughs> today's spirit of the show that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's kind of. That, I mean, that's tooling, obviously, where you're going to put your machinery and whatnot. But is any, have any of you guys? You guys are going to have some little gems of how, where you keep other things. So you know, particular tools or, or anything like that. Has anyone got any good little gems? You're going to have like Alan's tape measure stuck on the wall. Presumably, your tape measure sits there all the time. Yeah, I don't know if you'd call it a gem, but uh, I, I hear people, I hear about guys losing their tape measure left, right, and center, and I don't lose mine. <laughs> no, I actually saw a uh, a comment in the chat about that. Someone said, "Would uh, Velcro be better than double sided tape?" Absolutely, I'm sure a nice French cleat system would be nicer too. But uh, I, I I go with the uh, simple way. <laughs> Pro you know what? And then probably because, but you know, here here's what the deal is, Alan. I have probably six tape measures in my shop, uh, but there's only one that I really like to work with. And if I can't find that one, I won't go grab one of the other five. I will just keep <laughs> looking for that one that I want. And so what I really need to do is find one that I like and like buy seven of them. And, and then it would be, it would work for me. Um, because I'm, there's, I, uh, that got, this is so geekazoid, but you, you, you kind of fall in love with the tape measure that you're used to using. And it's just, I know that, that sounds like I'm such a, uh, but I mean, it's like you pull it out and you, and you expect to see something. And when you grab and when you grab a different one and you pull it out and you see something different, it's like I don't like that. Where's my other one? And so yeah, I have like six tape measures in my shop, but I only use one. Did, did you name the one? No, but I I suppose I, you know. God, the first thought I have just doesn't isn't appropriate, so I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Joe, it's I, funny I, you say that because I'm the exact same way. I I will only use. My Stanley Imperial black and yellow, and I call it old black and yellow. <laughs> and I do have a few laying around. I hate the ones that have metric on one side and Imperial on the other. I only want my regular old black and yellow. It's so I just, uh, yeah, it's just you, you get you get attached to something that you're used to using, and then you don't want to use anything else. I, I know that one's over there, but I don't want that one. I want this <laughs> one. I can't find it. So, yeah. It's the only one that works, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've, I've got a new, a new favorite tape measure, actually. It's a red one. And... Um, it's it's actually contrary to Alan's little fetish. Mine's a metric imperial one, and I, I went to measure something and I couldn't find it. So I picked up one of my other ones and pulled it out, and it was metric only. And I just had to put it back in again and go hunt out for another one. So I ended up wasting time. So yeah, I like your idea, Chris, of having the same sort of tape measure because I've got like four or five in the workshop. They're all in the same place, but I pick up the favorite one. If it's not there, I pick up another one. That's generally the, the wrong one. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, hopefully that's answered vaguely some of the questions or at least given people some, some ideas around, you know, just organizing stuff. It, for me personally, it, you, you've got to go with your gut. I think don't listen to anyone else necessarily find your own way. It's almost like building up your stock of scrap wood. That is the perfect bottom line to this. Let it evolve um, because it will it'll change anyway, whatever you do. You'll find your way. Yeah, exactly. Ace. Um, 
Cool. Alex well, if you got... still doesn't have a clue how to set up that container. <laughs> 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 like, Great. I just have to let it evolve. I don't have eight ears. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is instant. <laughs> In making it, it's not gonna. Uh, you're not born with it, brother. You gotta. You gotta kind of gotta. You gotta groove into it, man. <laughs> vents. Put some vents in it. The amount of. Um, I know a few people that um, use shipping containers for canoeing, like storing canoes and wetsuits and buoyancy aids and stuff like that. Of course, kit goes in wet, gets closed up, sealed up, and then it's horrendous. I thought you were taking. I thought you meant you knew people that took shipping containers and then and and used them as and turned them in canoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it. That's what I heard too. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going, you hang with some freaking different people, Richard. Good for you. Uh, anyway. Brilliant. So what's what's everyone up to anyway? What what are we actually doing at the moment? Well, what are you guys actually doing at the moment? <laughs> um, I'm not really actually doing much. I've got a I think I have a video coming out because I have a ton of questions on a couple of videos that I've done and I, I figured I probably should address them. Um, and so that's what that I, 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 I'm going to, at some point during this week, I'll, I will videotape that and answer those questions and hopefully help some folks out. I mean, some people are going to look at that and go, yeah, gee, Chris, I know I already freaking knew that, but you know what? A lot of people don't. So I'm going to throw it out there. Um, I can tell you who I've been watching though. Um, I watched my personal hero. Uh, do you guys know who my personal hero is? I mean, me. The, the one, there's one person in this whole community that I go, oh, and it's not Jimmy Duresta. Trust me, it's uh, uh no, Andy, Vance. Andy Berkey. No, 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 no. <laughs> Andy, Andy's an ass. <laughs> no, Vance Maker. Vance I, Maker well, is the man. I love that kid. I swear to God, I do. Uh, and he's, you know what? And I'll give a little love to Tim because I think he's as cool as he is because his parents are really that freaking cool. Um, yeah, that's probably a lot to do with it. Uh, but, but but he's a great kid. And uh, I spent the weekend with him last weekend at Jimmy Dress's place. And and Tim and him put, put it together, a shop tour video. And it was Vance actually doing a shop tour video of Jimmy Duresta's shop that he has at his farmhouse. And, but Vance was pretending that this was his shop. Uh, and so Vance was walking everybody to his shop tour. And then he wa he was, <laughs> my favorite part of the video was Vance was walking around the shop and he goes, I can't believe how much stuff I have. <laughs> 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 it was, it was, if you haven't checked it out, Vance Maker, check it out. His shop tour is down. It will be in the description when this comes out. Uh, but give it a look. I mean, because I, I don't know how to tell you. I, I, I love his dad. I love it. Uh, and I love Vance. I mean, he's my hero. Because uh, any kid that's that into making and, and has, a, has a father like that, my hero. Completely sidetrack off the just thought this occurred to me. Do you know if um, Tim and Vance are coming to make a central next year? You know what? I haven't talked to Tim about it. Um, I can, I can check with him. I'm sure he would love to, you know, whether it's feasible or not or economical or not for him. And I, I don't know. I mean, but I'm sure he would love to, um, you know what? Maybe it's time to, for Tim to get a sponsor. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you know, you've got a long way to, um, to travel um, for that one, but yeah, it, it would be awesome if he, um, if he yeah, rocked up because I, I genuinely like to meet Tim and uh, advance. I think that would oh, be, uh, yeah, Tim that'd is, be a good day. Tim, out. Tim is a great guy. I mean, we need to get Alan there too. So I mean, if we, if we can work out some way to get Alan there, then let's get Alan and Tim and Vance and Tim's wife. And I mean, why not? I mean, it'd be fun. I mean, I, I would yeah. love to, I would love to have everybody over there. This is going to be a really big GoFundMe project, boys. No, 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 no. Well, I don't think I, I don't think GoFundMe. That was a joke. Where you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Anyway, go ahead. Move on, Richard. <laughs> cool. Well, Alan's Alan's in the spotlight. So, what uh, what have you been up to, Alan? Oh, I'm just putting the finishing touches on the wedding box. It worked out just fine. I'm just waiting for the bat symbols that Trevor Carter made for me to come in the post, and we should be all good. But who am I watching? is Katz Moses Woodworking. Uh, Katz Moses and I have been good friends since basically we started our YouTube channel. And the video in question I'm talking about is how to make uh, dovetails easy. And it was put out by Make Something by, what's that, David Picciuto, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, Katz Moses has always been like, that's his god in the community, okay? He has always looked up to him in a big, big way. And last week, he got the opportunity to make a couple videos with him, and it just blew me away watching it. So I had to shine attention on that. Uh, it, it 
it just must have been amazing for him. So go out, go over and check that video out. And I do believe they still have another one coming as well. Awesome. So I, I thought your bat symbols had arrived. I thought I saw a picture of them. That was, was the that picture. He, yeah, that was the picture he sent me saying, "Look, they're done." I mean, the post today. <laughs> so that was actually right, the picture. Gotcha. Right. Okay. I was getting a bit confused because sometimes. You know, you know I employed him because he had CNC. Turned out he could not CNC them, and he sat there and scroll sawed every one of them, 102 of them. Wow. I mean, he's nuts, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he'd be nuts doing one or two, let alone a <laughs> hundred and two. <laughs> so, I prefer to think of him as passionate. Oh. I think yeah, of that's... him as the reason why Alan trashes scroll saw. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't have to do it. <laughs> I sent him a picture of that scroll and I was like, I can't be I can't do it. You have to do it now. <laughs> but again, that boils down to you know workflow and stuff like that. If if it's something that you can't do or you just don't want to do or it's not economical to do yourself you know Chuck outsourcing it. outsourcing um if that's more viable so talking about outsourcing jamie what are you uh, what are you up to what am i up to well i've been obviously been posting pictures of that damn tiger everywhere that i'm working on a scroll saw um i've put 11 hours into it so far and it looks like i've done nothing and uh, so yeah that's uh I uh, and so I decided to take a rest from it the other day and done like a purple heart bowl. Oh, that looks nice. nice. So nice, good for yeah. you. So that, that came out all right. Polished up quite nicely with some uh, Yorkshire grit and some Hampshire sheen. Can't remember what it was. Micro crystal and wax. I think it was. But uh, what am I watching? I am watching. Uh, Steve Twidell from Temple Boom Turnings. Oh, God. Really? And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, would you watch I don't know why. I think, I'm having, I think I'm having an early midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> um, he put out of uh, a very late video to Shogun Jimmy's skull challenge, and he turned and carved a skull brain pot. So, and it is actually incredible, even for Steve. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's just absolutely brilliant. It is so. Yeah, Steve Twardell. Which also, I just want to mention that straight after this show goes uh, finishes going off air, half an hour afterwards, he's just started another series called Little Shed Live, which is live on his YouTube channel. Awesome. He's streaming that on his channel, is he? Yep. Which is every I, th I think he's doing it every Sunday and every Wednesday now. Oh wow, that's that's so, awesome. Yeah now, got, yeah, now they've got internet in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard, who is it that's making a guest appearance with us today? Is that... Uh... This is the bench dog. Say hello. How are you doing? Yeah, they can't speak, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> she's showing up. Who said that? Ah, she's Jamie's like, family. you know they can't talk, right? <laughs> Well, I, 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 you know, as, as as we draw this to a close, I just I just want to hope that that uh, that Joe gets the help he's needed, and that he doesn't, <laughs> and that he does he stops you know drinking and whoring on on Saturday nights, and he's able to make it more often. Joe and I are Joe and I are in a war who, for who can have the worst attendance, and I'm about to lose over the next few. I think I might send him some anthrax. <laughs> also, also want to uh, quickly say that uh, if you don't know already, that um. Maker Central tickets are actually uh, gone available now, so you can uh, you can head over to makercentral.co.uk, not .com. Nick, who was over in the chat, um, and purchase your, purchase your tickets over there. Awesome, Jamie. Let me a quick question before we wrap this up. Um, is there any word on uh, hotel discounts? Uh, because I've had a lot of people asking um, me about that. I've, I've spoken to Nick. Apparently, he will be getting some links for. Uh, the discount code and it should be coming sometime soon. Awesome. I'm sure you will let everybody know as and when. Yeah. Also, just to add to that, I mean, I, I don't know what the, the discount code is, but I have no idea. Going on. But for people that are traveling, particularly those that are traveling from much further afield, I suspect that Birmingham is, is, is American is get priority. Um, yeah, well, I mean, just don't just discount the other towns because Birmingham and Coventry as well um, are fairly close together. If you're coming that distance, then also, you know, 
there's quite a few hotels in Coventry that you can use. Um, mm. No, I understand, but, but we're trying to, yeah, but typically at these events, you know, the people that are attending it kind of congregate into some one hotel and there's parties that happen because of it. And so you kind of want to stay in the same place. So you're not drinking and driving and things of that nature. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, but my, my point was they're actually quite close in, and easy to get to. So there is an oh. option for, you know, oh. it's not, they're not walking distance. Don't get me wrong, but if you're coming a couple of hundred miles or, or more then you know, 10 miles outside is not that inconvenient for traveling the kind exactly. of the mini, the mini distances. But I don't think there are any massive hotels where everyone's going to end up being. And I say that because I think there's just going to be so many people turning up. So we may no, have to just play it by ear. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, either way, I mean, if, if you don't want to drive, you can always stagger. I mean, if it happens to be 10 miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, down the M6, it'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <Uber. laughs> I'm not sure how Uber works in the UK. I've never Ubered in the UK. So, you live there? What the hell? <laughs> I know, but I, I, that's, I don't need to get in a taxi because I've generally got other transport arrangements. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, if you've been to the museum in your town, probably not because you live there. Anyway, um, <laughs> that pretty much, I think, wraps up the, the show. What, um, I better do my shout out. Is anyone even interested now? No, not I'm really. No. Nah. Fair enough. I watched a really cool video this week. Um, yeah, it, we'll make sure that it's down in it, the links. It'll be you, mentioned, you mentioned it right at the start. You yeah, you did. Yeah, bomb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll have something to do with Game of Thrones, I'm sure. Anyway. Actually, and, God love it. It. and God love you for not mentioning that this week. But anyway, go ahead, Richard. Wrap it up. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, um, where can everyone be found anyway? We better do that. People want to know where to find you guys. Chris? You can you can find me in Connecticut. Um, you know. Um, oh, you mean social media? Um, That's uh, what I was oh, referring to. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, I <laughs> make the first yeah, cut. Just like in every episode we've done. <laughs> oh. That's right. I forgot. Uh, uh, make the first cut on Facebook. Uh, Chris Cute on YouTube, and that's it. And and on Instagram, because I've got one picture there. You can go check out. It's kind of cool. So, and I'll update that. I'll update that next year. So go ahead and check that out. I was going to say, point to know if you've actually seen Chris's Instagram picture, then you have to wait 12 months for the next one. Cause the oh, it's, it's, it's golden. It's golden. So yeah, check it out. <laughs> and, fo and follow me so that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Alan? Where can everyone find you, mate? Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube under the Woodworking Junkie and in Southwestern Ontario. Excellent. Jamie? You can find me on YouTube at JP Woodwork and Twitter and Instagram at JP underscore Woodwork and in Fanet. Excellent. And <laughs> what about you, Joe? We'll get Joe to edit himself. <laughs> 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 find him in the outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, yeah, make sure you go and subscribe to guys on their YouTube channels. Follow them on all the social medias and stuff like that i've been rick morley you can find me at brainfizz.uk and under my name on youtube uh, once again thanks for listening if you still are and we'll be back again next week see you later <laughs> have a great week everybody <laughs> see you later have a week